proposition is simply this. If all employers will act together to shorten hours and to raise wages, we can put people back to work. For more than 100 years, Americans have grappled with how to fairly compensate the nation's lowest paid workers. Here's a look back at this big issue, a brief history of the minimum wage. The seeds for a federal minimum wage were first planted in the industrial city of Lawrence, Massachusetts in 1912. America had established itself as a world power, leading the globe in steel, autos, and agricultural production. But a series of industry scandals had awoken something within the working class, revolt. In January 1912, 30,000 textile workers walked off their jobs in Lawrence after their wages were cut by 32 cents. For nine weeks, strikers endured Arctic temperatures and billy cub wielding police before the factory owners finally agreed to a 15% wage hike. It became known as the Bread and Roses strike and it shook the country to its core. By the end of June, Massachusetts would recommend the first statewide minimum wage for women and children. Within eight years, 13 other states and the District of Columbia followed suit. Even the country's leading industrialist, Henry Ford, established a $5 a day minimum wage at his factories in 1914, calling it the finest cost-cutting movie ever made. But it would take another two decades before the federal government caught up. 1929 found the bottom falling out of the New York Stock Exchange and the panic was on. Overnight, men of wealth were reduced to selling apples on street corners. The prosperity boom of the 20s had exploded like a giant soap bubble, and the United States tumbled down into a bottomless abyss of depression. In 1933, as the country reeled under the Great Depression, Congress passed the National Industrial Recovery Act, giving President Franklin Delano Roosevelt the right to regulate industry. It is time that we made a clean-cut effort to bring about united action action of labor and management. As part of the NRA, FDR released the President's Reemployment Agreement, which asked employers to reduce hours and raise wages. 2.3 million employers signed up. That is why I am asking the employers of the nation to sign this common covenant with me, to sign it in the name of patriotism and in the name of humanity. Well, dear, it looks as if we have the right man in the White House. He's surely leading the country back to better times. He certainly is. Steelworkers of the Smoky City thinks that the NRA is 100% fine if the firms will live up to the code consigned to them. But just two years later, in 1935, the Supreme Court ruled that the NRA was unconstitutional. It was the beginning of a tense battle between FDR and the Supreme Court as the justices continued to nullify state minimum wage laws. Finally, in 1937, the Supreme Court buckled under pressure from FDR and began ruling in favor of the state minimum wage laws it had previously rejected. And FDR sent Congress a new, shorter bill. Even though it was severely weakened, the bill passed congressional review and was signed into law on June 25, 1938. After many requests on my part, the Congress passed a Fair Labor Standards Act what we call the Wages and Hours Bill. The Fair Labor Standards Act established a minimum wage of 25 cents an hour, 40-hour work weeks, and the abolishment of child labor. Except perhaps for the Social Security Act, it is the most far-reaching program, the most far-sighted program for the benefit of workers that has ever been adopted. Over the last 75-plus years, Congress has raised the minimum wage 22 times, but its purchasing power peaked in 1968 at $1.16 an hour, which is equal to $10.15 an hour in today's money. As its value degrades, a movement to raise the minimum wage has taken root, with 29 states and the District of Columbia setting their own minimum wages higher than the federal standard, the highest California and Massachusetts, who pay their lowest earning workers $10 an hour. But efforts to raise the federal minimum wage have been met with fierce opposition. But this is all about politics. Now in Washington today, a brutal battle over the minimum wage in this country. Republicans in the Senate filibustered, beating back a bill that Morning would have raised the federal minimum wage to $10.10. It is now stalled at $7.25. Some cities have picked up where Congress left off. The city of Seattle made history on Monday when it raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour, far and away the highest in the country. Yeah. 
But as fast food workers stage marches across the country seeking a $15 an hour wage, some economists wonder if such a drastic increase is economically sound. Fast food workers and all workers deserve a living wage. One thing we know, that fight today owes a lot to those textile workers marching through the snow-laden streets of Lawrence, Mass, more than 100 years ago.